Our first demo is the drill and tap. For the drill and tap, we go to the upper right hand, upper left hand corner of the kit. We get our drill and tap drill bit. We will need one oversized fender washer, which we will drill and tap. And then we will need a quarter inch cap screw that we will screw into the threads to show how effective yet simple this item is. The important thing to start this demonstration, ladies and gentlemen, is to make sure that you turn the chuck very, very tight. You're getting into some extreme drilling here and you want to make sure that you don't get any spin out when you're working with a tap. So we put the fender washer into the vise. Now what we're doing here, you could say Mr. Customer, is we're duplicating a metal door frame in an office building or any kind of a building where your thread rips out on your hinge screws, which is a common problem for maintenance. In this case, we can drill through with a larger drill bit than the older ripped hole and then we go through with the drill and tap after drilling the tap is behind that and we will be tapping all in one motion. Now when I drill I like to hit the thread, the drill bit and the metal I am about to drill. Time out. You notice that we have a real clean start to our hole. Any of you out there that have ever drilled into metal know that you first have to center punch. With our drill bits at Handyman, all of our drill bits have a 135 degree split point. What that means to you and your customer is the very point has a micro microscopic split to it so it will self center punch. The sign of a good drill bit is when you're not shooting chunks of metal all over the workbench. It's also the sign of a good cutting fluid. Cool cut keeps the chips close to the drill bit. Now we have gone through. Just before you go through, back off on the pressure. You never want to stomp your threads into the hole. Now I always reverse my drill bit by pushing the reverse button. And I back out. I want to get a nice clean thread in here by slowly starting my thread. And it's always best to put some tapping fluid on, clean off the chips and so forth. Now you're ready to tap on one tool. I've taken my thread through, now I bring it reverse back. Now to get a nice clean cut, I like to go in and out twice. One reason is, when you're demonstrating in front of your customer, if you only go through once, your cap screw can seize in the threads a little bit. You want to have a nice clean thread, so by going through twice, you will have a clean insertion. Wipe off our work. You don't want any metal burrs in that thread. Then we take our quarter 20, this is called a quarter 20 cap screw, and we simply thread it into the threads. Now what we've done, we're simulating replacing that hinge screw on that metal door frame with a nice clean solid connection or fastening where you had a ripped screw before. Now this has many, many different uses. It can be on the side of a tow motor, on the side of a uh, sheet metal truck body, anywhere you want to be able to thread and attach something. Let's say you're putting new uh, stainless steel running boards onto a Mack truck. Your customer can actually use the drilling taps. Now in my hometown, the meter department for many, many years used a drill bit and then they came back with a tap. When they put the new meters on every spring, a lot of the fastener cap screws were ripped from the year before. Now they take a drill and tap, one size larger, they go right in there, re-tap, and they put their new cap screw on and move to the next meter. Good, easy way for the meter departments to get out of what was once a very expensive, time-consuming jam.
In the shop we are in today, and you need to look around the shops you're in, as you always do selling chemicals or anything else, we found a piece of bar stock where our customer was very, very creative. He wanted to get a stainless steel cap screw into a piece of bar stock. He could have taken the drill and tap and drilled and tapped and had a very good fitting. What he did was he drilled the hole inside there, and then he welded a nut onto the outside. Then he had to let that cool down. Then he tapped this into this cap screw into his nut. A lot of people do it that way. You never get a good square job. It's a very sloppy way of doing it, but it's also a very popular way of doing it. Drill and taps can make this less time consuming and get the job done quicker. Once again, we apply our cool cut. Once in a while I will stop, pull the drill out, and take a look at where I'm at. You never want to thump the tap threads into this metal surface. Now we're through, we stop, reverse it to get a good clean start to our thread. Wash off the junk. Turn it on forward, cut your threads twice just like before. Reverse, forward, reverse. Now we've got a nice clean double cut thread. Clean off your surface real good. You don't want any metal burrs stripping your threads. Grab another cap screw from the top of your toolbox, or your kit, I should say. Simply screw in the cap screw. So which is a cleaner job? This from Handyman, or this from your Handyman customer? Of course, this is the cleaner cut. There you go. Look, Ma, no welding. At a lot less time. Folks, if you get an opportunity to find something like this lying around the workbench or somewhere in the shop, ask your customer once you do it if you can keep it. In fact, I'm going to keep this. My customer said I can. And I'm going to show future customers what we can do for them, how much nicer their work can look and how much easier it can look, and how we take them out of the welding and the crooked fitting and everything else with a nice, straight cut, no welding, no nut. Saving time and money.